Welcome back. Welcome to Multiply Your Why, a Missio podcast. Love it. You're here with Andrew Spikes, CEO of Missio. And I'm Alan Dragu. I'm the director of strategy here at Missio. And we are going to talk about all things marketing related to um, churches, faith-driven nonprofits, businesses who are led by faith-driven leaders, you yep. know, leaders who bring their faith to work. We bring our faith to work. Yep. And so that's what this podcast is all about. It's centered around marketing that actually works, but driven for faith-driven leaders. And talking about marketing that actually works, today's topic. Very interesting. <laughs> it's a great segue. <laughs> Very interesting, which is how do I know if my marketing is actually working? What are the measurements there? That's a big topic. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> it's huge. And this is, let, let's, let's caveat with this, is this isn't all uh, spreadsheets and KPIs. There's a lot of that. Don't get, don't get me wrong. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> we are. But it's not all spreadsheets and KPIs because that stuff can be intimidating to a lot of people. Mm. And, and it could honestly drive you away from the idea of like, okay, well, you know, let's not measure anything. We're not, that, <laughs> you're, we're not, we're not going that route where we're going to be so countercultural. We don't measure anything, but we're going to hit both sides of the coin, which I think this will be a fun episode. We get two perspectives because Andrew, you are big. I love this stuff. <laughs> you, love, you love CPR. This is going to be like my favorite episode we've done. <laughs> I will sit here and talk about this for hours. <laughs> it's true. But I do think there is something. But I'm not going to. We're going to keep it to 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, we'll keep it short. You know, we'll hit your we'll hit your commute. You'll be happy. You'll get to work. And you'll realize something new. Hopefully, you'll have learned something that you can implement. But, I mean, I, I do. I think we should have a real conversation about how to measure marketing that actually works. Because the reality is people spend thousands of dollars on marketing that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And they don't know that. Um, yep. And that, I mean, whether you work at a church, that's, that's, that is tough stewardship Man, right hard. there. Yeah. It, whether you work at a business, that's, that's bottom dollars right there, bottom line dollars. And, and it, so there's a lot of different facets where you as a good leader, especially a faith-based leader, you want to be a good steward of your finances. You want to be a good steward of your wisdom and how you navigate it. You want to make sure your marketing is working for you. And so there are, what I would consider measurables and immeasurables of good marketing. I mean, we could talk about either or, yeah. either or yeah. measurables or immeasurables. But I mean, bottom line is don't invest in something that isn't working for you. So let's figure out if it's working. Let's figure it out. If yeah. It's working. I think that the, uh, the most breakthrough question that we have anytime working with a new church or business or organization is, what does success look like? So let's define, when we say what's working, yeah. we, what, what is what's working? Like what's what, working for what you? Is work, what is the it's what's working part, yeah. right? And, and when you go to bed at night, what do you think is the factor that is or isn't working? Yeah. Right? What do you lose sleep over or sleep well on? So, um, and a lot of organizations ha have a different perspective on it, right? And if you talk to a business owner, that, what's working is a lot different than a CMO, right? Yes. A CMO, they're there to support the organization, but they have their own perspective on what's working, what's not working. A business, you know, vice president, marketing director, um, an entrepreneur, what's working is different yep. based on the seasonality, the tenure of the business, where the business is, uh, you know, if what's working for a startup is going to be totally different than what's working for a 100 you know, year old company. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's important is, is the, is everyone's what's working part success metric is different. It is different. You know, is it lead generation is a brand perception, brand awareness, whatever, whatever that is. Um, or is it just business growth? You know, you may be a CEO and be like, I just want to grow the business. And you're like, well, yeah. that's a big thing, right? That's a big yeah. part. So, um, yeah, I think the, the first part of all this is you have to sort of do a look in the mirror and say, what, what, what is the definition of success for my function, for my organization? Yeah, I think I think that's incredibly important because, as you mentioned, everybody's is different. And so we have to figure out, and you have to figure out, um, what those are for you, whether they're measurable or immeasurable. But a great example of this is I had a conversation with a lady 
a couple weeks ago at a church, very small church, very small church. There are 30 people mm-hmm. on a Sunday, right? And um, I was trying to figure out, you know, I was trying to figure out what she was trying to accomplish. And they have a room that could fill about 50 people. And they're doing, yeah, yeah. So it's not a huge room by any means, <laughs> right? right? right. Um, and and they, but they're doing church a little bit differently. They got couches in there. They got like a coffee bar. Ooh. Like they could have fit 80 people in there with just chairs. But she's like, well, we want to do lazy the, boys. Yeah, we want. Yeah. yeah, she's like, we want to do the couch thing. We want to have the coffee thing. And we want to make it intimate so we can fit about 50 people. Success to her was 50 people. That was her success because we had talked about it. I was like, well, what are you trying to accomplish? And, and, and so I was like, you want to grow by 20 people. She, did, she was through the moon to grow by 20 people. And I'm like, that's awesome. Okay, cool. That's your thing. So we've identified that. That may not resonate with, you know, a, a, a much larger church that has bigger resources that have the space to fill significantly more people or a business that, you know, is you know, a million dollar business has a very different sales goal than a $5 million business. Mm -hmm. So measuring those things, it's measuring against what you find successful, not just what somebody else tells you to measure. Yeah. So is there, so we have done, we do this obviously every day for churches and companies and nonprofits all over the country. Uh, But we have both also been on the other end of that where we have had to drive success with the organization we were working at as an employee um, I mean, I have a story and then you may have a story too about when you were charged with drive success. Yeah. Um, so I have, there were, there were two in a past life. I was head of global advertising at UPS and one, one of my, you know, success metrics was return on ad spend at this multi, multi, multi million dollar level, right? Is how much money could we get back for the money that we invested? So that was metric number one. Yeah. The other one though that I had to do in conjunction with that was uh, at the time, this is really interesting. And I'm, I think I can say this um, at the time UPS was perceived as an old white man brand. Mm. Um, and there was a massive perception flaw in, and I promise I'm going somewhere in where culture was versus how people perceived the brand. Mm-hmm. If they thought it was old white man brand, but you know, it's, 21st century here there there's a disconnect because we have millennials now making decisions about logistics and you have people who are you know purchasing from a logistics company that are not that don't look like the perception that they had yeah and so our success metric was change the perception and that's hard that is very hard how do you measure changing the perception now we did right and there is a way, but it is like focus groups. And yeah. Things like focus that. groups. Yeah. It was a lot of, it's quantitative and qualitative, um, surveys. So, but success were, was one was return on ad spend financial gain. Yeah. yeah. Super easy to measure. Super easy to measure. The other one was how do people perceive your brand? Yeah. Very emotional. Not only that, this is what's really hard is how does the change of perception impact business growth five, 10 years from now? That's hard. Like that's how do you project that? If I don't, we didn't solve it. Yeah. We just yeah. knew that what felt right. And I think this is, I think a good tip for you is what felt right. is just what we had to do. That yeah. was what success was, was the joy and the, that we got out of knowing that it was in a better spot. It, it was not in the spot as a brand that we felt pride in and that we were proud of. So we had to, we had to adjust it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that is, it, it, and it's a, it's a great thought because you have two sides of the coin where you have to measure for spend. And that's that's where it gets real easy for businesses, especially where it's like, I spend 10000 but I got 20000 Okay, great. That's That would be a win. That's easy. Yeah, right, that's super easy. Changing brand perception. Um, I mean, like you'd mentioned prior experiences at other organizations, right? I worked at a church prior to this. And when we worked at a church, there were things that we measured that were pretty easy to measure. Mm -hmm. Things like uh, how many, how many people engage with our YouTube online stream and for how long? Those things were pretty easy to measure where it's like, okay, we got 30,000 views on this video and they watched up to about, let's say 18 minutes. So they made it through the worship set. 
Was that successful? Yeah, we consider that successful. We would say, wow, they watched the whole worship set. That's amazing. Did they watch the sermon? Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. They cut out at 18 minutes. But they watched the sermon to some people that, you know, some churches may have been like, that's a dramatic fail. To us, we were like, that's a huge success. They watched an entire worship set, so they engaged with that. Super e easy to measure. We also navigated a very similar shift where, like many churches, we, have, uh, we had an older demographic, uh, as well as a rising young demographic, and so we navigated shifting the brand perception of our church from these, like, old beige and red and like just old ish colors and things like that as well as the way we said things the way we built sets the way we communicated to say we want to change our brand perception less from not just the older demographic but but more younger probably more millennial how do you measure whether that's working or not some things are not immediately measurable and yeah. you have to make an investment decision just because you think in your gut it's the right thing to do. Yes. And and I would I would probably add just because it's not immediately measurable doesn't mean it's not meaningful. Mm. Um because there were things that we had a really hard time measuring but we knew this is really meaningful. Because there's a lot of people that you know would have probably felt excluded that we really did want to spend time with and connect with and, and do things like that, where it's like we couldn't necessarily measure it, but we knew it was right. We knew yeah. it was the right thing to do. And so we did things like, I mean, we did things, the techniques that you would traditionally do. We tried A-B testing on a lot of stuff, which I don't know if we want to nerd out a little bit, but we A-B tested a lot of stuff where we, yeah. would, we would send one email that looked and sounded a certain way to a subset group of people. We'd send another email to those, you know, to a same subset group of people that looked and sounded differently to see which one got opened more and which yeah. one got read more. So we did things like that, or yeah. we would A-B test YouTube streams, or we'd A-B test graphic designs on our, on our social media. So A-B testing was a great way that didn't give us all the data, but that was a method that we used to yeah. kind of help close the gap between those immeasurables and yeah. the measurables. Yeah. Helpful for the measurables. So, so let's jump into the, the measurables. I think with the grain of salt is, is you're not going to be able to measure everything. And there needs to be a gut level um, sort of place in your heart that says, what happens if we don't do this? Yeah. And if that gives you a weird feeling, then you, and even if you can't measure it, you should probably still do it. Yeah, you should probably approach it. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about how to measure success, how to know if our marketing is actually working. Well, let's get in the... It's just the right thing to do out of the way. Now let's let's identify a couple of different things that you could say is success. Yes. Um, for businesses, I'll do a business one, and then if you want to, you can talk about the church side. Um, business success would be, I like to start from the in business goal and work my way backwards. Okay. So growth. Hey, we want to growth grow our business. Okay. Well, what is that? Grow well, typically in most businesses, that's a revenue growth. Right. And then you would say, all right, well, how do I get more revenue? Well, it's either we increase average order value or we increase our quantity. Okay. Well, how do we take do notes? Yeah. <laughs> take average order value or each. That's, that's it. That's the only two way. Right. If you're doing one off. The other one might be if you have a retention or a repeat recurring business model is how many do we, we retain? But again, that gets to the lifetime value of a customer. So you, you get to, you start with the business part first. You don't, I think a lot of marketers really struggle to just test and measure things that aren't directly impactful to the business. Mm. It has to impact the business. Has to. Yep. Um, so if revenue growth is it, okay, great. Average order value. Okay, so then, or repeat customers or new new customers. All right, let's go to new customers. Well, then we say, all right, how many new, new customers do we need? Well, it, we need to get 100. Okay. Well, if we need to get 100 customers, net new customers, then we say, um, all right, well, how many leads do we need to generate or how, what does our prospect pool need to look like to get new leads to have new customers? All right, well, if we get, you know, if we need a hundred customers, then we need a thousand leads. Yeah. Okay. Which by the way, that is accurate. 10% is what we would consider 
uh, a good conversion rate there from leads to That's a close customers. rate. Yeah, yeah, it's a close rate. Yeah, yeah. So you say, all right, I need 1,000 leads. Okay, to get 1,000 leads, I need how many clicks? Mm. If you're, Let's just talk about it inbound digital advertising lead gen, right? So I, if you need 1,000 leads, you may need 10,000 clicks. Yes. And then you say, well, gosh, how do I get 10,000 clicks? Well, if it's a dollar a click, that's $10,000, that's right? If it's $2 a click... Is twenty thousand dollars? Yeah, and so that you funnel it back into that way. Um, the way you optimize this, though, is to say, all right, if I'm getting a dollar per click right now, and I need ten thousand of them, is there a way I can get ninety cents per click instead mm -hmm. of a dollar? Mm -hmm. Well, you just d improved your efficiency by ten percent. Mm -hmm. So that's a small tweak. Well, then you say, well, what if I don't need ten thousand clicks? What if I could do it for if I could convert higher? What if I could do it for 5,000 clicks? What if mm -hmm. I could go from 5,000 clicks to 1,000 leads instead of 10,000 clicks to 1,000 leads? Your conversion rate, so you're, you're, that's, that's a metric you, you look at to improve. And so then you back up from that. All right, if I need this many clicks, how many impressions do I need? Mm -hmm. If I need 10,000 clicks, then I need, what, a billion impressions? I mean, not a billion, but a lot of impressions. Explain what an impression is. I should probably do that. Yeah, yeah. so impressions are, uh, see this, I'm, Appreciate you keeping me honest here, because I'll just geek out on this stuff. We're good. We're we're gonna yeah, roll this. I you. hope you're taking notes, guys, because this is serious. <laughs> so yeah. impressions are the unique number of times the ad is shown. Yes. Okay. Um, and so, if I show an ad to you, Alan, five times, that's five impressions. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're one person, but you saw the ad five times. Yeah. Um, so that's an impression. An impression is has been used for, in advertising since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. billboards commercials radio yeah. spots billboards they t how many times have we i don't know individually probably in a past life where it's like billboards are like yeah you get two billion impressions <laughs> a day billboards are like yeah we have 50 million people drive by this but i'm like golly you sure that's right my friend <laughs> how do you measure that yeah uh speaking of measure so anyway so you get that's how i approach it and then i tweak the main thing that I like to do is I like to tweak the ratios. Yeah, yeah. And there are a couple of ratios that I lean into, like hardcore. Mm -hmm. um, two in particular, I look at your cost input mm -hmm. and your conversion input. Cost input is like how, what does it cost to get these impressions? What does it cost to get these clicks? And then the other ratio is how efficiently can I turn them? How efficiently can I go from an impression to a click? From a click to a lead, that sort of thing. So what's the cost input and what's the conversion? So those are my two inputs that I look at. Um, and so how do you know if your marketing is actually working? Well, you would say at the end of the day, if I just spent $10,000 and I got, you know, the leads that I planned on getting and I closed that many, it's a success. Yeah, it's a success. But you need to tweak every step along the way. Yeah, I think the biggest, here's the biggest piece of advice I can provide you guys is every single time, as much as possible, have a plan for what you forecast it to be. Like, yes. what are you comfortable with? What is the value of a new customer to you? What's the value of a new lead to you? Yeah. And if you can hit that mark, it's a success. If you don't hit that mark, then you need a tweak. Yes. So I before you go too far in this, you need to forecast what you're comfortable with and what you think is actually going to happen. And then you measure back to that. Yeah. There's two things I kind of want to double tap on that you had mentioned, which is there's two ratios that you tweak, which is like, let's say cost efficiency, where it's like, hey, I was spending a dollar. Can I spend 90 cents? You know, things like that. There's a lot of people that don't know, is a dollar good? Is a dollar bad? So we can, we can kind of talk about that for a sec. But it's like, if you spend digital advertising dollars and you say, I want to, I want to convert people at 90 cents instead of a dollar, what would you address to try and get that cost lower as well as I want to talk about the flip side for a second when you said, well, they're coming in for a dollar. How do I increase the conversion? Meaning they went from I just landed on your website to I filled out a contact form or I bought a product or something like that. There's methods to increasing the conversion. I think between how important those two things are, cost efficiency 
right? Because because when when you talk about like I got to spend ten thousand uh, dollars, that could be very overwhelming for some people. Where they're like, "Are you serious?" And and not everybody has to spend ten thousand dollars, right? You could spend five hundred. You could spend a thousand. Just, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Sample. yeah. It's a rounded number. Uh, but in that, what what are you thinking through when somebody says when when you see a, a Google advertisement, Google AdWords, whatever, and it's a dollar? And you want to get it to 90 cents. Well, how are you going to get it to 90 cents? This, that's a great question. We should probably do like five new episodes <laughs> <laughs> off of this. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is going to, oh, no. this is going to go like five new episodes. All right. I'll just give you the high level though. Give me the, give me the best high Number level. Number one is, is identify the areas that you, that could be changed. Uh, so if, if we're trying to get a cost per click cheaper, um, that means we have to get them to, to click on it more efficiently. Uh huh. So the ad copy, the ad creative. Yeah. What's in that messaging that can get them to click yeah. more efficiently to the creative? Yep. Um, so that's an element that can be another so that's an element that can be tested. Another element is your time of day, right? Is this in the morning, that night? Maybe it's um, day parting where it's mm. just like Monday through Friday versus the weekend. Maybe it's device types. Maybe it's geography. Is it yeah? California where are you showing or that? Or Tennessee, right? And so that's why you need an expert to do all this for you. But it's demographic, demographics, right? Interest. There's um, men, women. What age? Yeah, and then don't even start it on like behavioral interest yeah. targeting. Like, is this so? All these things you look at as really subset pieces of the entire user journey and say. What could be changed or tested, and that's how you that's how you you know tweak your way down yeah to get it down, um, and then the conversion rate piece is is a lot of its landing pages right so yes. how efficiently what do we need to do to optimize our landing page to sell the story a bit more to communicate our why and you know that sort of thing and then there's some best practices too to help yeah I, and I think that's a great point though because measuring success is there are obviously you've laid out hey here's a flow of measurables right working backwards of um, you know, from a purchase all the way back to uh, becoming a lead, all the way back to becoming a customer, like the whole journey, right? You walked us through the whole journey and those things are important to measure. It's, uh, I do think it is a lot easier for a business to measure, um, than it is a church yeah. per se, because Let's talk about the church side, the church side is very interesting because the church, there's some, uh, there's some obvious things that the church does measure. And by the way, I don't think measuring is wrong in the church. I feel like there's some kind of stigma mm. that where like numbers is bad and like churches are almost made to feel bad that they like measure things like attendance or, or you know, because that's a big one. That's a big one is attendance. I don't personally think those things are bad. Like in the Bible, Jesus fed the 5,000. He didn't feed the many, mm. you know? And, and so I think it's important to realize like, man, even... Numbers are important because that number is a human. Mm -hmm. And when you're impacting a larger number, you are impacting a larger number of humans. But that's also not to disregard people impacting smaller numbers mm -hmm. of people where it's like we talked about earlier in the episode, the lady I had a conversation with that just wants to go from 30 people to 50 people to fit in their room. That's not bad. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's just a different measurement. But there's also like small groups, right? Attendance. Yeah. Right? How many like how many people do we have in a small group? How like, many people join growth track? Growth tracks. Yeah. yeah. How many people are are fasting on a weekly yeah. basis? We have people in a fasting group. How many people are tithing in our church? Meaning, how many people are worshiping through their generosity? Mm. Like those are all things that matter differently to different churches. And so, I think there are really good things. You just have to find out what matters most to your church because there are a lot of things where people are like. There are tons of people I have conversations with churches every day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, here at Missio, just hopping on the phone with churches, helping them navigate stuff. There are churches that are like, my goal is online engagement. Like followers, comments, likes, shares. We want to know we're reaching as many people as possible, as effectively as possible, wherever they are. We don't care. Like we just want to reach as many people as possible with the gospel for Jesus. I'm like, right on. Let's talk about that. We dive into that. So we start measuring things like likes, comments, shares. Comments and shares probably way more viable than just likes and impressions, right? That just, it's a deeper form of engagement. 
But there's there's the opposite side to where some churches are like, yeah, online's great, but we we disciple in person. We want people in small groups. We feel like life changes. We 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 want to pursue that life change at a deeper level, which is harder to do online. It is. And so they measure in-person attendance primarily because in-person attendance will flow to things like small groups and volunteers and things like that. And so measuring those things, just want to, I just want to make other church leaders feel comfortable like that's okay. Like that is a good thing. And those are great things to measure small group attendance, discipleship groups, volunteers, giving, in-person attendance. Those are signs of fruitfulness. Measure what matters to you. Yeah. Yeah. Measure yeah. Measure what matters to you. Yeah. And what matters to you uh, may be different than what matters to the church down the street. But isn't that what makes us like makes d- different churches the big C church? Yeah. Like everybody's that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it is supposed to be. You know, what works for you is not necessarily what's going to work for other people. Um, and they're doing something they're uniquely equipped to do, and you're doing something you're uniquely equipped to do. And so. I think measuring is absolutely right. Mm-h. Um, and there's important things to measure. And there's, yeah, how much time we have? I, I, know, I, I feel like we could. So I think one, so just a couple of action points. One is set a clear, like, success metric. Like, know yeah. what success looks like to you. Yes. Number two is have some goals in place. Yeah. Like, what does a goal look like to you based on what you think success is? Yeah. Number three is measure that. Number four is just improve. Yeah. <laughs> like, tweak. Just tweak. What right? makes it better? What, what did we do that made it grow? What did we do that made it yeah. decrease? Whatever it is. And and continue to measure that based on who you are. Don't feel bad about measuring. Mm-mm. And not everything meaningful is measurable. Mm-hmm. And don't jump off a cliff if your number didn't hit what you thought. Oh, my gosh. Don't do that. Don't just, jump off a cliff. Just tweak it. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Just yep. tweak it. Don't yeah. give up. Yeah. So. Uh, you want to wrap us up? Yeah. This has been... Uh, a great love this. tip of the iceberg conversation yeah, love that this. probably deserves about five, 10, 20 more episodes, but I'm glad you're with us. Glad you're hanging out with us. If you want to learn more about Missio and our team um, that helps faith driven organizations, just like yours, you can visit our website. It's missiodigital.com. And I really appreciate you joining us today. We'll see you next time.